The bloodline have turned against Paul Heyman. Heyman was attacked by the group and put through a table on Friday's WWE SmackDown episode from Madison Square Garden in New York City after the group's wise man refused to acknowledge Sola Sokoa as his tribal chief. A show-long storyline played out on Friday SmackDown with Sola Sokoa toying with WWE Hall of Famer Paul Heyman. The bloodline closed the show with Sokoa revealing that he had lied to Heyman and Fatu was in fact at the arena for the ceremony. Sola Sokoa went through the group from Tama Tonga to Tonga Loa to Fatu and all acknowledged Sola Sokoa as tribal chief. Sola Sokoa then turned to Heyman and Heyman refused to acknowledge him as his tribal chief. After he refused, he was attacked by the entire bloodline, ending with Paul Heyman getting powerbombed through the commentary table. After SmackDown went off the air, Paul was stretchered out of the arena. Friday's angle with Paul Heyman paves the way for the eventual return of Roman Reigns as a babyface to feud with the current bloodline, constituted of Solo Sokoa, Tonga Loa, Tama Tonga, and Jacob Fatu. Reigns has been on hiatus since WrestleMania 40 when he dropped the undisputed WWE Championship to Cody Rhodes. Solo seized control of the bloodline in the absence of Reigns and went so far as to tell Paul on last week's SmackDown that Roman would not be returning to the group in storyline. Additionally, three more wrestlers qualified for the Money in the Bank matches set for July 6 on Friday's WWE SmackDown. LA Knight defeated Logan Paul and Santos Escobar in a triple threat qualifying match on Friday to earn the fifth spot in the six-person men's Money in the Bank ladder match field at next Saturday's Money in the Bank pay-per-view. LA Knight pinned Logan Paul with a roll-up after hitting Santos Escobar with a BFT to secure the victory. In the first women's qualifying belt on Friday's episode, Tiffany Stratton defeated Jade Cargill and Candice LeRae in a triple threat. Tiffany Stratton pinned Candice LeRae with the prettiest moonsault ever after Indy Hartwell interfered on LeRae's behalf and took out Jade on the floor. In the second women's qualifier on Friday, Naomi defeated Indy Hartwell and Blair Davenport after Jade Cargill got retribution on Indy Hartwell, interfering in the match which helped lead to Naomi's victory. Five of the six spots are secured in both the men's and women's Money in the Bank ladder matches, with the final spots to be decided on Monday's Raw. Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus versus Ilya Dragunov will decide the final men's participant in a qualifier on Monday's Raw, while Zoe Stark versus Ivy Nile versus Dakota Kai will determine the final women's qualifier. Current lineup for WWE Money in the Bank on Saturday, July 6th in Toronto at Scotiabank Arena includes the World Heavyweight Championship match Damian Priest defending against Seth Rollins with the added stipulation that if Priest retains, Seth Rollins can't challenge for the title ever again as long as Priest holds it. If Rollins wins, Priest leaves the Judgment Day. Additionally, we'll be seeing the Intercontinental Championship on the line as Sami Zayn defends against Braun Breaker. Also, Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton and Kevin Owens versus the Bloodline, as well as both the men's and women's Money in the Bank matches. And in case you missed it, WWE has announced a groundbreaking deal to bring three major shows to Indianapolis. WWE revealed this Monday that the 2025 Royal Rumble will take place at Lucas Oil Stadium on February 1st, 2025. The stadium in Indianapolis will also host a future two-night SummerSlam and a future two-night WrestleMania, confirming an earlier report by WrestleVotes. In terms of when Indianapolis will host a future WrestleMania and SummerSlam, WrestleMania 41 in 2025 is already set for Las Vegas. SummerSlam 2026 has been announced for Minneapolis. However, the location for SummerSlam 2025 has not been confirmed as of yet. Kayla Braxton posted a message to social media thanking WWE and its fans on her last night with the company this Friday. In a message posted to X, Braxton wrote, I love my WWE family. Thank you guys so much. I'm overwhelmed. I will miss you all, but we will see each other again. She announced last week that Friday SmackDown and MSG would be her last WWE show as she leaves the company to pursue other ventures. The on-air personality spent eight years with the company beginning in NXT as a ring announcer before settling into a role as a backstage interviewer and host on the main roster. She pointed out in a social media post on Monday that she does not plan to pursue work with any other wrestling company. 
insane. The support from you guys has been overwhelming. I'm so thankful for you. But I did want to make one thing clear. As I enter my final week in WWE, if I wanted to keep working in wrestling, I wouldn't be walking away from the largest wrestling company in the world. Nice try, rumor weeds. Undisputed WWE champion Cody Rhodes also called Kayla out for a curtain call at Madison Square Garden. Also, in case you missed it, WWE's Rhea Ripley and AEW's Buddy Matthews have announced their marriage. Rhea posted a photo of the couple on her Instagram page late Wednesday with the caption, Till Death, and the date, June 23rd, 2024, indicating that the two were wed this past Sunday. The couple went public with their relationship in 2022. They announced their engagement last August. They are both Australian natives. Ripley is currently out of action with an unspecified injury that forced her to vacate the WWE Women's Championship on the April 15th edition of Raw with her right arm in a sling. Buddy Matthews is a former AEW World Trios champion who last wrestled on the June 15th AEW Collision episode. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Plus, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for plenty more pro wrestling coverage.